So you've just set up these operations in Shanghai. So at what point will I be able to go to Shanghai, hail one of AutoX's robo taxis, and what will that process look like? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's actually in the coming weeks. In the coming weeks, uh, we will announce a major partnership uh, with a major ride hailing platform in China. So it's just uh, the way you uh, hail the robot taxi is basically the same with how you hail a regular vehicle. Uh, or you open the app, you enter the source, uh, the pickup location and the destination, and then uh, it will automatically match you with uh, either a self-driving car or a human driving car, depends on the availability of both. Uh, uh, of course, we only focus on the self-driving part, but uh, other company will take care of the human driving uh, regular taxi vehicle. Uh, and then uh, if you can, you, you check that, you, have, you confirm with the uh, the booking, uh, then you get a self-driving car come to pick you up. It's very convenient. It's uh, basically uh, the same with the regular vehicle. You can pick you up anywhere uh, in the region that allowed by the government to do self-driving. And even before the coronavirus pandemic, the autonomous driving industry was going through some difficulties. And now the virus has really hurt the ride hailing industry as well as global auto companies. You've partnered with many global makers, including Fiat Chrysler. So how has the pandemic impacted your operations as well as these partnerships and rollout plans? Yeah, internally, actually, uh, I would say that they, uh, we are doing uh, pretty, pretty good Yeah, because uh, most of our technology development is rely on uh, simulation on the cloud. So we have built a, a great platform for doing simulation, running days and nights every day, allow us to con conduct millions of road tests every day. And uh, so uh, also during the lockdown period, we have been quickly focused on uh, further improving our infrastructure to, uh, to adapt to this working style. Um, and right now, uh, city in, uh, in Shanghai or like other city in China has been able to recover the operation 100%. Uh, so we are lucky that we can get through the pandemic quickly. Um, but that's for internal. For externally, it's true that there's a global uh, impact for auto industry. Uh, but at the same time, because of the COVID-19, people also see the great importance of self-driving car. As we uh, admit that we did not... Uh, we did not foresee that a self-driving car uh, is very helpful for virus uh, uh, virus reduction uh, for, uh, to be very helpful for social distancing. Uh, so, uh, but uh, with the COVID-19, we actually see that the greater importance for self-driving robot taxi, so that you don't need to have a human driver sitting in the car together with you, or the robot delivery, so that we can enable touch this logistics. Um, to adapt to this kind of COVID-19 situation, we also further improve our technology. We have been trying to reduce the touch interaction. For example, when you enter a self-driving car, right now we have improved our technology so that you don't need to touch the screen to, to confirm your identity to start the self-driving car. But instead, you can use your voice uh, uh, to, to do all the uh, identity confirmation and also start the vehicle. So our goal to empowering the world with AI driver to provide uh, universal access of transportation of people and group is actually more important uh, than before uh, for, with the, the, the COVID-19 situation. Jen Chung, it's Rich in Hong Kong. The thing is, this is all well and good, but it must be very difficult as a Chinese-American company operating right now. What are the difficulties you're facing, given the war of words between the two countries actually getting uh, 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 more uh, louder and also, uh, of course, after last year's trade standoff? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I, I would say that uh, it really depends on different industry and different company. The impact is slightly different. For us, because we are creating the technology in-house, we're not regarding on uh, external technology, uh, so the impact is, has been very minimal. Uh, but of course, it's still more troublesome. For example, traveling between China and U.S., I, I would say that right now almost no flight from China and San Francisco. Uh, it's also very difficult, uh, much harder to attain a visa for our employees to travel to China or to U.S. Uh, the environment, but at the same time, I would say that this is a challenge at the same time, but also opportunity because uh, for example, right, uh, in particular for ch China market, uh, our main business focus in the China market, and this environment actually drew out the competition from for the uh, U.S. company to do business in China market. 
uh, this actually may create a lot of opportunity for the domestic players like us to do better in the China market. So, of course, um, as CEO, how much money do you have in the bank? How much do you need to keep this going? Uh, we are actually very lucky that uh, right, right before the pandemic, uh, we actually just finished our pre B uh, round of fundraising. So right now we are actually very well uh, uh, healthy in finance, I would say. Uh, of, of course, self driving is a huge uh, investment because it requires a lot of R&D as well as a lot of vehicles that we have over 100 vehicles running uh, in China at the moment. Uh, so that, that's why we, it's very important to also continue to uh, attract uh, funding as well. Uh, but we are very, uh, we are very well covered thanks to uh, uh, our uh, Series A uh, uh, pre B fundraising right before the uh, COVID-19. And Jenshong, there are many startups in this space in the U.S. and China. You have Pony AI, Zooks, Cruise, Waymo. So what sets auto access technology apart and how would you compare the progress of startups in the U.S. versus China? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I would say that uh, it's true that many companies in this area, but uh, first of all, this self-driving industry is heavily regional. Uh, because the technology, you need to get a lot of data to train the AI system. And those data has to be adapted to the local tr driving scenario. Like, for example, driving in Shenzhen, in Shanghai, is completely different from driving in the U.S. Uh, so these companies are actually, first of all, a lot of these companies have to choose their main battle to fight, choose their main market to address on. Like, for example, for us, we choose China as the main market. Uh, for like, for Waymo, for Jews, they choose U.S. as the main market. So uh, in terms of, uh, it's true that in U.S. there are actually still probably around 11 major players in this area. But the situation in China is actually uh, less competitive, I would say. Right now, I would say there are only major, four major players, including AutoX, including, like you mentioned, Pony AI, as well as like Baidu, DD. Uh, I would say that these four major players is, uh, uh, is really competing in the China market. And the China market is huge. It's because of the uh, industry uh, outlook is unlikely there will be a winner take all situation. Therefore, we, we actually see that the China market is more, c although it's competitive, but at the same time, it's quite healthy. Uh, in terms of the technology, that's actually our strength. I've been working in self driving car more, for more than 15 years since my very young age of me. Uh, I have been receiving training from MIT. Uh, I was a professor at Princeton University. We have been publishing a lot of uh, academic research work in this area, like 3D deep learning, uh, or leveraging uh, uh, hybrid uh, fusion between camera and LiDAR signals together to do object recognition better. So we have a huge edge in this space. And also, uh, I would say that in the China market, uh, everything uh, for the self-driving uh, space started around uh, 2016. So we are actually founded in 2016 as well. We are not too late to the game. Uh, of course, if you found it today, it would be too late to the game. So I, I would say that in the, in the current situation, uh, uh, I would say these top four players, uh, both of, all of them are growing healthily. Uh, in the China market now. And Jenshong, what is the main bottleneck now, whether it's technological, regulatory, or, or financial? What's the main bottleneck to preventing commercial widespread self-driving cars becoming a reality? Very quickly, please. I think regulation is certainly a, a, a major bottleneck, I would say. Uh, it, 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 people are still a little bit more conservative. Uh, and, and in particular, a lot of uh, regulators, they still uh, push back uh, a lot in this self-driving car domain. So we, what we can do is, we, we have, and also what we have been doing is, uh, we have been using a huge fleet to catch a lot of data and use those data as a way to uh, persuade and to demonstrate the safety of the technology. I would say that this is... Uh, basically the same in China and in the U.S., although they are slightly different, but uh, I would say globally, is the regulation is still imposes a, a lot of restrictions. 